2006 through 2014 Chevy Tahoe fuel pump replacement. I'm Brian Dustin from How To Automotive. I'm going to walk you through the steps of replacing the fuel pump. First step we're going to do is disconnect the negative battery cable. The next step we need to do is get our vehicle up on a hoist, or if you're doing this at home, you're going to need to use floor jacks and jack stands, and you will need to get the rear of the vehicle up as high as you possibly can get it to get the fuel tank out. Up on the hoist. And I wanted to point this out, so if you guys are doing this at home, if you jack up the rear end of the car high enough, you can do this at home. But when you take this tank out, the back end of the tank closest to the rear end here is going to come down first, and then it's going to kind of clear the rear end and slide out like that because the tank hooks underneath here so it won't come straight down. So you need to have it high enough where you can get this thing to drop down at a pretty severe angle. So keep that in mind if you're doing this at home. So we're gonna get started by disconnecting the fuel line here at the front of the tank. And as you can see, I got this little vent, this cap popped open. The way this works is there's a tab here and a tab on the opposite side here. So you kind of squeeze them together and at the same time as you squeeze them together, you push the tab up. So once I got the tab popped up, then I put a little screwdriver in there and pry it and pop it out completely. Now you can just pull the hose and separate the line. So at the very rear of the tank, we're going to take this vent line off right here. So what we're going to do is just going to squeeze the sides of the vent line and then pull the hose off. After squeezing the tab and disconnecting the hose, you can just push it aside for now. Now we're going to disconnect the filler neck hose here. So you can disconnect the hose from the tank right here or a little further up on top of the frame. But if you do that, you're going to want to have a gas can and a funnel uh, close by. That way if the tank is really full, you can drain some of that out into the, into the gas can. After removing the, the hose from there and draining some of the fuel, you may want to cap the uh, end of the tank. So you have a choice where you can pop the hose off right here at the tank or you can follow the hose up a little further on top of the subframe here and disconnect it right here. And this is the way I'm going to choose to do it. So I'm going to take the, the hose off and pull the hose off. And what I'm going to do is use a pair of uh, crimping pliers, hose crimping pliers, and crimp the hose. And uh, that way if the tank is really full, when you, when you pull the hose off, it doesn't drain all the gasoline out and uh, it keeps the tank, the fuel in the tank. So I just used an 8 millimeter socket and a wrench, ratchet and removed the hose clamp. Now I'm going to use a hook tool like this and I'm going to hook the, uh, the inside of the hose here and kind of break that seal that it seals to the uh, neck. So break that seal free and then I'll twist the hose and pull it off. Now that you got the hose off and uh, crimped off, and if you don't have something like this you can plug it. So now we need to disconnect the two EVAP lines from the EVAP canister here. So you're just going to squeeze the tabs and pull, push the hose off. So when I was trying to squeeze mine, it didn't want to come off. So what I did to get it off is I used a hook tool like this. And I hooked it into the little tab like this and flexed it a little bit like that. Then I moved up to the top one here and I flexed it. And once you get it flexed past the little nipple in there, then you can just push the hose off. Now for the second hose just behind it. It has a tab very similar to the one in the front, so you'll pop that hose off. So now I have a transmission jack positioned underneath the fuel tank here. It's a hydraulic jack that I can raise and lift the uh, tank into place. If you guys don't have this, you can use a floor jack, but you're going to need some blocks of wood to spread the weight uh, out. You don't want it centered into one small spot on the tank. It can damage the tank. And also you want to balance the uh, tank on it. After that, you can go ahead and remove the two tank straps. So there's a 15 millimeter bolt there. And then once you get it unbolted, you're just gonna lift the strap up and off the little perch. So you'll, un you'll take the bolt out here. And then if you follow the strap around on the other side, it has a little slot, so you'll just lift it up and out. And you'll do that for front and back straps on the tank. To make quick work of that, I'm gonna use my Milwaukee M18 fuel impact gun here. This is my number one go-to tool. For jobs like this, it makes makes it go really fast and easy. So once you get it unbolted, you'll just lift the uh, the strap out of its little groove here and then set it aside. Now I'm going to start lowering my hydraulic uh, transmission jack here. If you're doing this at home, you're going to lower your floor jack, whatever you're using to lower the tank down. And then once we get it down a couple inches, we're going to unplug the electrical connector and there's going to be one more vent line that we need to disconnect. 
I also have my jack slid towards the rear of the vehicle because I'm lowering the rear of the, the fuel tank down and it has to slide underneath the differential. So the rear of the tank will come down first and then once it comes down to a certain point then we'll slide the tank towards the back of the car and drop the front of the tank down. But before we do that we need to disconnect one more vent line and disconnect the electrical connectors. So at the very rear of the tank, looking over the differential, if you look to the left of the uh, EVAP canister, there's one more vent line right here. So it's, it's got those uh, the same type of tabs that are on the vent line here. You can try squeezing it and uh, pulling the hose off, or you may have to use the pick tool back inside there and flare the little tabs open like we did on the EVAP canister and pop it off. And then you'll just push the vent line over the top of the subframe. So now that you got the vent line disconnected, you can start lowering the tank down a, little bit, a few more inches. Also, as you're lowering the rear of the tank down, you may have to bend the fuel line or fuel neck, filler neck here. So you kind of bend it over to the left or right and then lower the tank down. That way it'll clear the differential. Now that you got the tank down a couple of inches, you can reach over the top and unplug the electrical connectors. So there's going to be two connectors, one for the map pressure sensor. You'll unplug, squeeze the tab and pull that off. And then the, the, the main tab it has a little plastic uh, clip. You'll slide it towards the rear and then push the tab and pull it off. Now we need to disconnect the fuel line with the blue tab or the one that's closest to the frame rail. And we need to pull that uh, clip off and there's going to be a little, little catch a little further down. So you unplug the catch and then pull the fuel line off. Now you're ready to lower the rear of the fuel tank and as you lower the rear of the fuel tank down you want to push the tank towards the front of the vehicle and then let it drop down and then you can slide it underneath the differential and then the front of the tank will drop down onto the hoist. Now you can lower the tank down to the ground. Next we need to take off the little catch ring here that holds the, the, uh, the fuel pump in but before we do that what I like to do is use a little compressed air and blow off all the dust and debris that accumulates on top of the fuel tank. Maybe take a little rag and wipe off around and just kind of get the area as clean as I can possibly get it before we take the uh, pump out of the actual tank. Now you can take a chisel, a flat blade screwdriver, or a little uh, pry bar like I got here and insert it into the grooves on the outer portion of the ring here. And what you're going to do is tap it around with a hammer and you're going to keep moving around in a couple spots and tap on a few spots until the ring turns counterclockwise and pops off. And as you're turning this off, you want to make sure you don't gouge into the tank and damage the tank or cause any fuel leaks. Once you get the uh, ring free, it'll pop up just like this. I also went ahead and disconnected the remaining fuel line with a white tab there. So go ahead and unplug that also. Now you can just lift the, uh, the module up and there's going to be one more vent line that we need to remove. So you pull the pump up where you can work on it and then you're going to squeeze the little tabs right here on this, fuel, on this vent line and pull the line off and once you get it pulled off then you can lift the remainder of the, the fuel pump up and out of the uh, car like that you are going to spill a little bit of fuel so be prepared to wipe that all up and clean that up so there's usually a lot of dirt and grime in the channel here where the fuel pump was resting so you want to wipe all that out and clean it up being careful not to knock that dirt and debris into the fuel tank itself so after getting it all cleaned up, I'm going to install an AC Delco replacement fuel pump. I'll leave a link in the description of the video for the parts. I'm going to take the new O-ring that comes with the kit, lay it onto the top of the tank right here in the channel. Then we'll feed the fuel pump down into position. Once we get the fuel pump back in there, we'll have to reconnect our vent line. So the on this vent line right here that we need to plug in, we need to retrieve the clip from the old pump. So you'll just flare the little tabs over and pull it off. And then you can transfer that over to the new pump. So slide it on. And then we'll, then you'll reach down into the tank and grab the vent line and plug it into the, uh, the port right here. Once you get that uh, achieved, then you'll line up the tabs with the, uh, with the fuel pump, how it goes. So you'll, uh, the fuel lines will need to point towards the front of the vehicle. So you don't want it off to the left or to the right like that, the lines won't line up. So you want to line it up where the tabs are to the, pointing towards the front and then push straight down like that. And then we'll take the lock ring retainer and put it over the top. So once you get the lock ring on, you'll just push it straight down into position, making sure that it fits flush on there. And then you'll twist the lock ring clockwise until it uh, locks into the tab. 
And the way I did that was use the hammer and punch technique to hammer it back on. And you want to make sure that it fully seats. So you're going to hammer it on the edge like this and tap it around. And you may move the chisel around a couple spots. And you want to make sure that it's fully butted up against the edge of the, uh, the lock tab like this. After that, you can go ahead and plug in the fuel line right here. Go ahead and push it all the way on and then push the tab in until it locks into place. So once you got the fuel lines on, you want to give them a good tug and make sure they're not going to pop back off. So now we're ready to lift the tank back up into position. I'm, I'm going to put mine on the, on the uh, transmission jack and jack it up into position. I'm going to put the nose of the tank up first. So I'm going to nose it in at an angle first. And then I'll jack the rear of the uh, fuel tank up until it clears the differential. Lifted it up on the jack. I had two people help me. And what I did was I slid the jack stand over to one side like this. And then had one person lift it up. And then we pushed it over the top right here. And then I jacked the front up to a position where it won't, won't slide off anymore. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and come over the top. Plug in our, uh, our vent line. So the vent line is our electrical connection. The vent line here has to go over the frame. So go ahead and route it over there. And as we get this tank up further, we'll plug it in right, right here. Now you can go ahead and plug in the electrical connector here. Um, and go ahead and plug in the uh, map sensor. After you got the electrical connectors plug in, you want to make sure you plug in the blue fuel line. So you'll, you'll push it onto the port, plug, push the little plastic clip down. And then further down on the line, it's a little uh, plastic holder that holds the line in place. So you'll clip that in there and close the little door hatch. After making sure both lines are secure and not going to pop back off, then you can start lifting the rear of the tank up. And as you lift the rear of the tank up, you're going to flex the uh, fuel neck out of your way, like here. So you'll bend it over to the left or right, and then you'll jack it up. And then as you jack it up, you're going to make sure that the hoses don't snag on anything right here, the vent lines and stuff. And then speaking of vent line, you're going to take the vent line back here in the front, and you're going to have to route it, make sure it's routed over the frame over there, up here. So once you get it jacked up high enough, then you can go ahead and plug it in. Now that that vent line is back on, I'm going to go ahead and just jack the, uh, the fuel tank all the way back up into position. And I'm going to put the two straps back on and tighten those up. Now that you got the tank all the way up and the two straps back on and bolt it back up, now you can go ahead and plug in the two uh, vent lines that went onto the evap canister right here. So you'll just push those two uh, hoses onto position and make sure that the little clips that they have are, are locked and secure. So I started with the top one, the smaller one first with the little red tab, put it on and pushed it onto it, uh, clicked. And then I put the larger one on and pushed it all the way into all uh, fully seated and then gave it a tug to make sure it wouldn't pop back off. After that, I plugged in the vent line that was to the left of the fuel neck. So push it in until it locks into place, give it a tug, make sure it doesn't pop back off. Next, you can flex the filler neck portion of the hose back into place, put it back onto the pipe and put the hose clamp on and tighten them up. Now, after that's re-secure, you're gonna follow the tank all the way back to the front. And then at the very front, we're gonna plug in the uh, vent line or the fuel line that went in here. So you'll push it in and then put the little tab that locking tab back into place and make sure it locks and secures and as always as i get those hoses reconnected i like to give those a little pull and make sure they do not pop back apart so after double checking that the line is secure we're going to lower the vehicle back down and once we got the vehicle back on the ground we're going to we're going to reconnect the negative battery cable so I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in the video in the description. That way, if you need to pick up any of those, you can find them there. And that will complete the job of replacing the fuel pump on a 2006 through 2014 Chevy Tahoe. I'm Brian Essa from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And also to remind you again that I'll link up all those parts and tools in the description. Thank you again for watching.